Puddles in the morning, puddles in the evening, puddles in the afternoon. Well, I'm a puddle boy and she's a puddle girl. The Puddles Podcast is starting real soon. Okay, <laughs> welcome to Puddles with Andrew and Brenna. Yes, she's officially a co-host. We're even going to put her name on the uh, thumbnail as well as, I mean, I don't know if this is news to you. Mm -hmm. Uh, (laughs) Puddles is back. I know you guys are like, I can't believe for the fifth time. But yes, it is. Um, I'm very excited. I felt like the Andrew Collins show didn't feel natural. It didn't feel good. And... I love just doing the show with Brenna, and I just want to <laughs> do it with you and not, like, rely on anyone else or have to uh, beg for someone to get on or any of that bullshit, and I just love our relationship, and I love the listeners, which I feel like I don't think about enough, and I, when I took another three months off, I was like, what do I want the podcast to be, whatever, and I think in the past, I've just forgot about you the listener and how great you are and how you leave amazing comments and i mean just incredible support over the years of listening to me and now brenna and we kind of want to make a podcast that is about us about our relationship but also about you and uh so the the new format we're gonna pick a new topic and we're gonna want to hear from you guys So the first topic we did was dating, and we're going to get into that, and uh, we're going to listen to some voicemails from you guys, and uh, yeah, so thank you again for listening. Puddles is back for the fifth time, and if it doesn't work this time, I really will just sell insurance. No, no, you're going to come back for the sixth time, and everybody will be able to believe that. We all knew this was coming back. (laughs) Nobody is shocked. (laughs) No one's shocked. You're not shocked at all? <laughs> the only th- Yeah, no, I'm not. I think uh, I have horrible ADD. We all know. And yes. I use it as an excuse a lot. <laughs> but who bringing back a podcast four different times <laughs> is it's like... It's very on brand. <laughs> a psychiatrist would be like, so tell me about yourself. <laughs> um, so I stopped and started a podcast <laughs> um, 18 different times. I started a completely new one. And uh, I'm going back to the old one. <laughs> I mean. Yeah, but there there was bad juju with the with the Andrew Collins show. I think like in your head, so it just like it it poisons everything, you know, like Yeah, it felt very forced to me. Like yeah. I, I never felt fun or silly. I felt like I wanted now it's time <laughs> it's the Andrew Collins show. I'm going to interview you. So tell me how you got your start in comedy. Because you you know, it's like it's like going on a first date. I was, my friends, my friend once asked me, what's good advice you have for, you know, a first date? And my number one rule is don't try to wear anything super different. Like don't go buying a crazy new outfit and don't try to do your makeup and hair different or special. Do it how you normally do it. However, it makes you, it makes you feel good. And it's the same thing with your podcast. You were trying to like try new things and do this thing. And it's like, just does do what feels good. And the the rest is going to come naturally. You know, you don't want to be uncomfortable. Yeah, no, that is true. So mm-hmm. I went and bought a brand new t-shirt for this. <laughs> you did. I really did. I, sp- I overspent. And I'm wearing new jeans. <laughs> <laughs> But other than that, we've listened to the advice <laughs> of just being ourselves. Yeah. I mean, this is what we'd wear normally. <laughs> no, it is. It is. <laughs> that is good advice. I think a lot of times on first dates, we, we are so nervous that we end up trying to be the agent for ourselves. We, like, represent ourselves. We yeah. lie. And then that comes out three dates from then. And then if it's a bit, the bigger the lie, the more you try to pretend to be something else, the more it's going to fall apart in the future. Yeah. So you might as well start out being a complete dumb shit, dumbass, idiot. Come in, you know, order appetizers, you know, get pigs in a blanket if you want it. Mm. If you want, you know, if you're a girl and you're on a date and you want a fucking cheeseburger on top of pizza, show who you are. 
You don't have to nibble on some lettuce. Cheeseburger pizza. I think that's what I tried to say, but I got <laughs> I got there. Like when you so yeah, so we'll get into dating. Um we went on kind of a date. My parents were in town. And uh double dates. It was a double date with my parents yeah. and they were stoned. I think maybe most of the time now that I think back. <laughs> so you have no idea your parents aging and I grew up my dad he was a bit of an asshole, you know, a little bit, not a disciplinarian kind of guy. Uh, I'll tell you this story. We went on a cruise and uh, that's what my family liked to do. And we went to Jamaica and my dad, he, okay. So we were on, the, we're on the boat. My dad let us do drink on the boat. I was like 15 and we went to New Jamaica and this cool kid, like this 17 year old guy brought back a stalk of weed like a big ass and we thought we were so cool because it was weed from jamaica you know right from the source man you know like i thought i was bob marley like i you know i had one dread i was just like yeah man from the source (laughs) and so you had one of those like blanket hoodies on (laughs) the colorful ones yeah (laughs) started playing soccer more (laughs) Uh, i was very fast (laughs) i don't know i could run really good uh i was excited and i just we got the weed and the guy was older. So, I, and I didn't really smoke weed in high school. I really didn't. Uh, I always got too anxious and thought I was going to die. Stuff like that. So I was on Same, the... Same, but I did it anyways. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know what? If I smoke more weed, I'll feel better eventually. Yeah. That's what I would tell myself. Wow. And then it just get so worse you get and worse. get really stoned. Yeah. Mm. So we go and we get the stock of weed and we bring it back. A s- wait, you went and picked out your own he stock? He did. This 17-year-old wow. dude brought back a stock. I think it's that's stock. the word. Stock? S-T-A-L-K. Stock. Stock. So he brings out the weed, and he has... We go on the balcony, and we have like a... I don't know, like a one-hitter or whatever. I forget. If, oh, he rolled the joint. Mm-hmm. It sucks when you have to roll a joint, and you don't know how to roll a joint. Can you roll a joint? <laughs> no, I've never been able to. Dude, there's I've nothing tried. worse than being like, you roll it, Colin, and like <laughs> I have like toilet paper. I'm like, yeah, this is cool. It's soggy. It's just, you have to lick it. Oh. and like. There's some people that over ew. lick. And think, remember mm. like sharing joints with people and like it was like wet. Oh my God. So used, wet. Ugh. And the wetter was. I don't even like, like sharing drinks with you sometimes. Like I can't believe I used to do that. It is weird yeah. that sometimes... Like using a couple's toothbrush after you eat each other's asses is weird. God, there, I the times that I've had to use your toothbrush, I've done so so reluctantly. <laughs> <laughs> like, because there's been a few. But then times. you'll blow me, and then I'll make out with you. Yeah. With my penis still on yeah. your mouth. <laughs> but if yeah. we have to but use. But the di- it's the direct. I need a third party. <laughs> yeah. Also, I've known my toothbrush longer. Than, well, a toothbrush. No, Not because I replace your toothbrushes. Because <laughs> I know you won't, and that's why I'm grossed out by it. <laughs> that is true. Look, I don't know why you fuck me. <laughs> it's really dumb. You're an idiot. It's because I let you fuck me. Th- that's true. <laughs> I am sweatier usually. Yeah. Um, I'm just enjoying the ride. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how. I feel like I'm a roller coaster with no screws falling apart. <laughs> Just breaking down. One of those old wooden roller coasters. Oh, dude, yeah. at the fair where no one goes. And people are like, it's just in the corner. <laughs> just like, come on. Or like the ones <laughs> where they're not fully put into the ground correctly. So you see them like tipping every time. That's, yes, that's literally me having <laughs> sex. Is the bed falling apart? No, I am. I am. My hips. You could hear my hips cracking like an old roller coaster. We were at a party recently and somebody said, our friends were talking about sex and somebody goes, they were talking about eating ass, I think, or something. And somebody goes, does Andrew eat ass? And your friend stepped in and goes, look at that guy. He doesn't eat ass. Really? (laughs) I thought, I think I have the face of a guy that eats ass. They go, he can't even get get hard. (laughs) Well, that's true. That's yeah. true. I don't know if those two things together. You think the I can't I, get hard, I'd eat more ass. <laughs> you can get hard. Well, now I take Viagra. No, or, on your own. Oh, yeah, I have yeah. been because I've been running. Yeah. <laughs> running. <laughs> it's Andrew thinks because he's been running that he can get hard because now he has be- better blood circulation. <laughs> There's something about not having as big of a <laughs> belly where I, my dick can get harder like my belly is not taking in the blood do you think because you can see it so you're like come on yeah come on that's a true thing yeah 
Your dick looks bigger when you lose weight. I mean, I get hornier when I feel better about myself because I'm like, yeah. Yeah, you were saying that you shaved your body recently and you feel better about yourself. Oh, my God. Like slick like a dolphin. And I was like, <laughs> I could wear anything right now. Like I I'll spread it. my legs as wide as I want to with, with some shorts on and I don't have to have concern. It's great. Oh, so you're worried about the bush showing up? Well, like if you don't <laughs> shave your bikini line, and you have super yeah. short shorts on. Sometimes it pokes out. Yeah. So Some monster down there. I, I, yeah, I definitely, when I trim my pubes, <laughs> I feel hotter. I feel like I have a vagina kind of, <laughs> <laughs> is that weird? When you trim your like pubes. Like if I jerk off after, right after I shave my pubes, I might've said this on the third time I brought back puddles, what? but <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? I'll feel myself and most <laughs> vaginas are shaved. Yeah. So it makes me in my brain think of a vagina more mm, if like, I feel like I have a vagina. <laughs> Does that turn you on? Because you're like, it, it's like almost like you're you're having sex with a vagina? Yeah. Wow. I think so. Because then you're just thinking of vagina. Am I a they them? <laughs> <laughs> Is that how they find out? <laughs> if you trim your pubes and you drink off, do you think you have a pussy? <laughs> Am I they them? No, I think that's <laughs> transgender. <laughs> all right. Well, shit. Well, no, nah, I like having a penis, though, too. I don't know. I'm all over the map. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm something on the spectrum. I like that you have a penis. <laughs> <laughs> you ever feel like when you grow your pubes out, you got a dick? <laughs> Maybe. No. <laughs> Anyhow, so I'm on the cruise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. By the way, this is so much better than the Andrew Collins <laughs> show. What did you do different? Uh, we changed the sign. <laughs> no, it's different energy. It is different energy. <laughs> yeah. So we're smoking the weed, and I'm so high. I'm on the balcony of this <laughs> cruise. Okay. No, no, I'm not like <laughs> high because I'm on the balcony. I'm high because I'm just high. And I only took like two hits, but I swear I hear my dad. I hear my... I hear like my dad's voice in my head, but I'm high and I think it's just my brain. Like, I don't think it's actually him. But then I start hearing him saying like, oh, I think it's my kids. I hear our kids. And I guess he was talking to Jeannie, my stepmom. I hear our kids. And I'm like, you're our kids. I'm like, how high am I? Where I'm like, li literally my dad is in my, you know, and I, and I, there's a barrier and I take a hit. What's the barrier? Wait. Like between the balconies. Oh, okay. So you're on the balcony. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I look across the barrier and my dad is like, oh. literally, like, and I like. On the other uh, side of the barrier. And I laugh and cough and I swear to God, I <laughs> put the fucking smoke in it. Like, what's that hit when you would, you would hit and you blow it into someone else's mouth, oh, you know? Uh, I forget what yeah, it's called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I did that to my dad. <laughs> and then I went back. And I was like, maybe he doesn't know it was me. <laughs> like, that's how high I was, where I was like, maybe he doesn't. Yeah. Maybe he's, like, confused. Maybe he thinks it's another little Jewish boy with a lisp. <laughs> and um, so, anyways, so I, uh, I, 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 we we go, we, we run away. And the next day, he's like, how could you guys smoke? He's yelling at us. He did, like, a whole thing, like, sat us down, uh. a whole production. How can you smoke marijuana? You want to go to jail? You want to ruin your future? You know, all this shit. And we're like, dude, chill out, man. <laughs> you know, <laughs> don't smoke some stock. Smoke some weed off the stock, dude. Chill out. And he You're was stocking me, bro. Yeah, dude. <laughs> he was so serious. Now you cut to 20 years later. We go out to dinner. I, we're talking to him. They have four packs of gummies, weed gummies. Two weed pens, and they're here for an hour. Like they're here for like two days. Oh barely. yeah, and they tell us Jeannie walks into the into the uh, weed store, and she goes, "We'll take ten dime bags." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She ordered a dime bag. So they were definitely smoking weed when you were smoking weed, because how long has it been since you've heard the term dime bag? I just can't see my dad smoking weed. I could see Jeannie smoking weed. Yeah. My dad, I just he was a doctor. He was very like you know, a doctor. Um, doctor Collins. Yeah. You know, and back then you can't be known for smoking weed back then because yeah. then your patients would be like, he's going to fuck, fucking cut me with a scalpel or whatever because he's too high. Yeah. So anyhow, yeah, she goes, let me get a dime bag. <laughs> <laughs> no skunk. Let me get an eighth. <laughs> Gross. So we're at dinner 
and he's stoned and we just start laughing about like we ordered seafood at a steak restaurant like the little things mm-hmm. we were laughing about mm-hmm. and i brought up the story about jamaica i was like do you remember yelling at me and now you're high <laughs> pissed and he's like no i'm on <laughs> no he didn't say that but he was just like <laughs> he like acted like it never <laughs> he's like yeah dude that guy was fucking annoying yeah. you yeah. it's so funny when parents get older but um they were fun dates yeah right Sa- yeah same thing well i i used to smoke weed in my bedroom and blow it out the window and my mom it was my my mom came upstairs once. I wasn't expect because she would never come upstairs. She would just call me downstairs because yeah. it was just our, the kids, me and my siblings' rooms up there. And she came upstairs once, and she could smell it as soon as she got up the stairwell. And I saw her smell it, and I went in. I went into my room and like wrapped it up really quick. I think I t- maybe th- threw it out the window, or I had something in my trash, <laughs> like the bottom of the trash. And she. Um, I obviously got in so much trouble. My dad was home. He lived overseas, so he happened to be home, which is 10 times worse because he disciplined way more than my mom did. And now when I go home, my mom's like, here, I got this pen. Your brother bought it for me. Try, <laughs> Come here. Try it. Come to the patio. Let's get fucked up. I get, the only time I black out is with my mom. <laughs> <laughs> and do you bring I up the fact that... I literally get crossfaded. Yeah. yeah. I know. I remember one time my, my friend... We, were, we got caught by the cops and he ran and he swam away. That's how Florida we are. He <laughs> swam away from cops. He like rode an alligator out of there. What? I swear to God. And the cops came. <laughs> Dude, I fucking, I was like 15. I had a pack of cigarettes and I threw the cigarettes. <laughs> I threw the pack of Marlboro lights under the, <laughs> under the car. I was like, they're not going to get me. Like and my friend goes, did you just throw fucking cigarettes, you loser? I was like, dude, get off my back. Oh. And my friends ran away and they um, they told their parents. So he got home and uh, he decided, his parents were like, what happened? He told them everything that we've done bad since like the third grade. It was like right out, if you've seen the movie Goonies, but he did, he's like, when I was seven, I... You know, I stole baseball cards. And when I was nine, I gave Dave a wedgie. And when I was 12 and, you know, went all the way to smoking weed and getting caught by the cops and running away and swimming away on an alligator. My mom came to pick me up the next day. (laughs) Oh, this is the best part. We stole the weed from his dad. (laughs) (laughs) His dad had a huge thing of weed in the garage and we would just take like chunks of it. His dad loved the Grateful Dead. Chunks of it. So we stole the weed from his dad. And uh so he's sitting there while the mom is yelling at us and my but he can't talk cuz he knows that we know he's a pothead. So he's just like oh, oh, oh. <laughs> he's just like oh, you can't do that. <laughs> he's high, you know. <laughs> he's probably needs to get high. And my mom comes and picks me up. And my mom growing up she was pretty hammered a lot. She didn't really like ever like tell us what to do or whatever. And uh, they told her what happened and she just goes, I just remember it like it was yesterday because it got real quiet and she goes, you smoked marijuana <laughs> <laughs> like that. Dude. You smoke like she like was just overacting <laughs> like she was a parent yeah. for the. Uh, so you got the high dad going. You got the other woman who's like, and then you got my mom who's going, you smoked marijuana. Like she was like a 1930s actress. I was like, yeah, chill out, dude. You're hammered. I don't even know how you drove here. So anyhow, yeah, um, it was fun though having my parents here. Uh, were you get nervous around them anymore? You don't really see them that much. I was pretty nervous the night before dinner, or like. The first night getting ready for going to dinner. But then after that, no. You were nervous because we were going to uh, Steak 48. I was more nervous about where we were going yeah. and what to wear. We are going to some bougie-ass yeah. steakhouse yeah. where everyone has fake in, tits. In Beverly Hills. In Beverly Hills. Yeah, so it de- also depends what part of town you go to. But yeah, as a it's girl, annoying because yeah. it's like, well, I would dress this way if it were you and I going to dinner, but then there's parents. So I have to dress this way, but I still kind of want to look a little bit like the other way. 
<laughs> that's true. So like everyone looks like a slut in there. Yeah. Everyone's dressed yeah. like their tits are above their head. Yeah. They're and they've got a smoky eye. A smoky eye, mm-hmm. smoky vag, a lot mm-hmm. of smoke. Lots of smoke. And a lot of guys on. smoking. I think there's a lot of hookers in there and guys oh. are paying for a little steak escorts. and shake. Yeah. Escorts, not es- hookers. Yeah. Escorts. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Es- yes, you're right. I'm old. <laughs> I didn't realize. Yeah. Sex, sex worker. Dime back. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Can I get a hooker? <laughs> How many hookers do you have? Uh, sir, it's sex worker. They're actually heroes. So, so anyhow. Um, yeah, so we walked in there. Yeah, it's hard because you can't look too slutty on a dinner date. No. No. Or you can. No. Lean in. Mm-mm. So anyhow. It was good. Good food. Yeah, so, okay, let's get it. So when we started dating, we asked the listener to uh, send in voicemails about uh, what annoys them about dating and maybe some annoying date stories. When we started dating, it was COVID. So we didn't, we didn't, we had a first. It was January, 2021. So it was the first year of COVID or the first eight months of COVID was, had happened. Things were still, people were eating an igloo still. It was weird still, but. Yeah, we ate outside. We had our own little room. It made it more romantic. Mm-hmm. Um, Have we told that story? I th- I'm sure probably. We yeah. Uh, you DM me. No, the date first date story. Oh, how you showed up late. You wore a skirt and no. it was like 20 degrees. What are you thinking about? You show up 20 minutes early everywhere you go. <laughs> I was five minutes late, maybe. Okay. <laughs> You just waited to for a long time. Yeah, I was waiting down like a long runway to it. Yeah, and I walked in and he was like, you were like at the end of the run at the end of the tunnel or, or the hallway. And I just had this like little mini dress on and I just got to like walk towards you. And we just kind of stared at each other the whole time. Then we were in our igloo. Yeah, we went. They and had you- our own individual room. We got some hummus. Yeah. And then we were talking about asses. Yeah. At one point, you stood up to show your ass. And no. Asked, no? What happened? <laughs> you let me feel your ass oh. if you could feel my ass. <laughs> Which we all know it was just about my ass. Yeah. And so you turned me around. You literally spun me around. Damn. Told me and lifted up my dress and touched my ass. No, you didn't lift my dress up. You weren't that. Yeah, but then dude, you like. Who is this guy? <laughs> you gr- this is a different date. You groped my ass. And you She's were like, like oh, yeah, yeah Then you that's started playing nice. guitar. And then you <laughs> ate my ass. And I'm and like, who is this guy? No. I'll fucking and then kill him. you ate my ass and no and then brought me home and i had to use your toothbrush no i ha- you you, God, you squished my butt and then you spun me around and then you kissed me oh, it was man. very very sexual was sexually no charged tongue? i don't think it was a tongue but it was like a, lo- a light nice long kiss damn yeah and then you and then you walked me to my car at the end and I was like very nervous because I was like, whoa, this guy just kind of like did what he wanted in a, in a, in a, in a, <laughs> Jesus. In a non-rapey way. And and I was like stammering over my words. I was like, oh, OK, like, OK, maybe I'll say like whatever. And you were just like you were like, it's OK. And then you were like, come here. And then you kissed me again. And then I was like, okay, bye. And then I got in my car and I didn't ask you. I was scared you didn't have a car. So I just was <laughs> like, I drove away before I could see where you went off to. Because I knew you'd just moved here from New York. And I was like, God, I hope he has a car. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I did have a car. So I drove away. I wasn't sure if I tried to get you. To, I think I tried to get you to come home with me. <laughs> <laughs> and I think you were like, I did feel, no? I don't know. Maybe. You didn't. And no. then the second date, did you just come over? COVID was no, a weird No, the times. second date we went and got, we brought a, ba- we got coffee and you brought a basketball with you on our walk. <laughs> you were like, maybe we'll come across the basketball court. Like, I'm going to play basketball with you. <laughs> that was, yeah, I don't know. I think I just wanted it like a fidget spinner. <laughs> yeah. You know? But yeah, anyways. So yeah, so then we, we would hook up. And yeah, then, we just started hooking up. Yeah. And uh, like we you didn't would, have sex you the would first buy date. me dinner though. You would always buy me like we would order take in or take out. <laughs> yeah, you got a lot of take out. <laughs> we would order take out and eat and have sex, and then I would wake up at two a.m. and leave. 
was such a weird yeah. move. Why would you do that move? Because I didn't want to sleep at your place. But what is that? like? Because you, one time I looked under your bed and there was a bag of carrots hanging from the from the bed, <laughs> from the baseboard. Because your place was disgusting. I knew you didn't wash your towels. I can smell the must. So that was a part of it. But it wasn't also <laughs> like trying to play hard to get. I mean, a little bit. But like, I just was like, we're hooking up. Like, why am I going to? I thought I thought you were doing it because you didn't want to you wanted to keep me like uh, no wanting you like you were like playing hard to get. Yeah, like definitely that was a part of it. But I had like I lived with my friend like I had a girl apartment. Like, why would I want to stay at your place? Like, well, it was St. Louis. You had to go to your car and get almost mugged. Yeah. every time. I was worried you were going to get mugged mm-hmm. and then it'd be my fault because I didn't wash my towels <laughs> and I had carrots <laughs> under the bed. dude. <laughs> <laughs> there was it was so many things in there and then you used your closet you, as a storage room <laughs> there was just clothes their clothes were displayed on your floor but then the closet had boxes dude and you caught me at my best <laughs> like that was my peak like if you saw me in new york carrots i had rats i had mice in my house i literally yeah. had like 40 mice that would just chill yeah i woke up one time the mouse played guitar my guitar. <laughs> I just heard him go, brown. <laughs> Dude, uh, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I don't know when you finally um, slept over. Maybe when you brought your own towel. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, we didn't go. Dating was kind of weird because, and I've always kind of been weird with dates, but because of COVID mm-hmm. especially. What do you uh, mean you've been weird with dates? I never really would go on first dates. Like, it would be... One, it's expensive in New York. Mm-hmm. When you have no money, going on dates and then being expected to pay, it's frustrating for a guy. And women do that fake grab. They go, oh, yeah, I'll get I'm going in. And they do the slow, go into the purse, and then they like, they move around. I'm like, the purse isn't that big. You know where your <laughs> card is. And she's like, yeah, it's at home, bitch. And it's like, <laughs> you're paying. And I'm like, so I can't, w- I can't go out and fucking hit up 80 bucks a date, a first date. Plus, I don't like the whole awkwardness of it. I would overthink it, and I would just be like, I'm not good enough for her, all that shit. Aw. Well, our first date wasn't awkward. One time I went on a first date with a guy. I'll kill him. And I met him at this, we went and got, you know, sat down and had a meal, which I feel like for a first date is kind of a lot to, to begin with. But I think I got, like, French fries and a drink. And he had a meal. And then at the end. <laughs> he wanted the split. I'm no, because I did the reach in like a normal way because I met him on a dating app. So I was like, I don't know this person. Like, you don't need to like we literally met 30 minutes ago. Whatever. Who cares? First of all, he had a fucking dangly earring. So that was red flag <laughs> number one. But then he a DJ or something. I don't even know. Yeah. He was like a really good looking guy, but like he ruined it. And then um. <laughs> we're like we get the check and i do the reach and i put down my card and he goes oh yeah you didn't think i was gonna pay for the first date did you excuse me my first my card's already down like what are you talking about so salty that's a guy who has paid too many times on a first date like talking some crazy shit about my yeah, card's already on the, the fucking fact. thing yeah um and then i left he said that and i was like no like what just kind of weird I left, gave him a hug, and then he messaged me on the dating app again because I didn't give him my number and was like, I had a great time. We should meet up again. No, you're n- I'm you're literally done. blocking you. You're done. Also, take that earring out of your ear. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, well, that shows that there is pressure to pay for the guy to pay, but, but there, you, you but could there, do it in a way. But where don't you could say split. that. Don't don't double down. Yeah. Yeah. That's weird. If you if you acknowledge it, like yeah, haha, you, good thing you're not expecting me to pay for the whole thing. No, that's <laughs> never gonna work. That line will never work. If you said that, I would have never messaged you again. And this, yeah, yeah. Um, let's listen to some of the uh, the voicemails. Let's hear what their problems are with it. Okay, first one's from Michelle. So what annoys me about dating is having to spend all this time looking cute, picking out a cute outfit, putting makeup on, doing my hair, and then to go on the date and 
these guys have so much baggage, right? So one guy I met was going through a divorce and he was still living with his soon to be ex wife. And he just did not understand why that was weird. Um, and, you know, just these common occurrences of just men holding on to their, their baggage and not understanding why it's an issue. <laughs> Yikes. Going through a divorce. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Living with his wife. Yikes. Yeah, man. Yeah. That's so, tough. I mean, what do you, you know? And she had to get ready for yeah. it. I did not expect it to go <laughs> in that. Like, baggage to me, too, is like a guy that has an ex-wife, not a current wife, you know? Yeah. That's just, that's a lot of, that's more than baggage. Baggage is an ex-wife? No, baggage is an ex-wife. Baggage is not a current wife. Yeah. That's a whole nother. Yeah. Well, those guys are just dating for different, they're dating to get back out there. And then some, and then like, sounds like Michelle is dating to like, find a partner and a real connection and then she's like what the fuck like you're not you're obviously not emotionally available why are you dating so that's the other thing with dates like especially in dating apps that's why they added that little thing like what are you looking for he's not going to say he's going through a divorce but say like you know he was honest about it which i'll give him that so she knew what she was getting um but But you don't want to be the girl that it's you're no. dating him when he's going through a divorce? No. Oh. No, you don't. I yeah. mean, I think uh, I think that just show, it depends what town she lives in. Maybe she lives in a smaller town where there's just not a lot of options. It's like either I'm going to date this married guy or, you know, a guy with a dangling earring. Like there's <laughs> no it, it's tough when you have and then the older you get, your uh, you know, guys are fucking shallow so they'll look for something, you know, 10, 20 years younger and not saying you're 16 years <laughs> younger. I know. Okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> wow, you're really hitting us with the some facts right there. I feel for this guy. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm saying it's hard to find a good dude. Yeah. Oh, so- and then the other day, Andrew and I run into somebody randomly. He used to date in Florida on the corner of a street in Venice. And he goes... Oh, yeah, I dated her maybe 10 years ago. She's like eight years younger than me. Is Latina, looks exactly like same exact features as me. I was like, okay, you fucking creep. <laughs> like you have a type down to the age gap. Oh, man, that was Love bad. Love you, but. This girl randomly, I knew her from Vero Beach, no. Florida. She's on the corner of the street in Venice Beach, California, 20 years later. I don't know. I mean, part of me thinks she knew I was there. It was, the ran the randomness was insane. Yeah, because she goes, "Oh, I thought I saw on Instagram that you moved here and you were posting about the, the show. show that you were going to that night." <sighs> and she happened to be at this at the same show, like on that corner the, the night same, before. Yeah, so the, it's almost like she knew you were going to be at that show. And then anyway, she came to the show <laughs> after I met her on the corner of the street with her dad. Yeah, and her Andrew dog. Goes, oh, we're walking up to her. And and he goes, oh, this is an old, old friend. I was like, oh, okay. We're walking away. He's like, yeah, I dated her. Gives me the whole spiel. Ugh. And then she comes to the show. And then at the end of the show, I end up talking to her for like 30 minutes. And I was like, Andrew's going to come and save me anytime now. No. I thought you guys were having a good no, I don't want to talk to your ex. Why would I want to do that? I just thought that. You guys had a connection <laughs> through me. You know, you both like no, something great. No, you guys yeah. had a connection. <laughs> I, I honestly didn't. I did not. I yeah. really didn't. But yeah, it was very uncomfortable for, I guess, for all of us involved. Yeah. Not her so much. She seemed fine with the whole thing <laughs> of the whole weirdness. She's like, come to come with us to Coldplay. I'm like, you and your dad and the dog? I'm like, oh. oh yeah. She goes, the tickets are only $350. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. Oh, yeah. Can you imagine if we went to Coldplay with, with them? And you're both on each side of me. And I'm like crying. During Our fucking... arms are all linked. It was all yellow. <laughs> oh, wrong girl. Wrong girl. Hey, bro. <laughs> You go to me, you go, I guess you have a type. <laughs> and I was like, shit. And then I had to perform. They were sitting right in front. Her dog heckled me when I got on stage. Her fucking dog literally started barking. Yeah. It's because I kicked it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you. 
<laughs> that would have been cool. A fucking cab fight. Yeah, just yeah. kick it and run away. That would have gone viral. All right, what's the next next? Uh, I wonder if we could help that girl at all. I think just uh, I don't know. I'm trying to think wh- if you could change. No, it's yeah. just part of the game. Part of the game. Part yeah. of the dating game. Shit. All Sorry, right, Michelle. What's the next one? All right, Andrew. I'm glad to have you back on the podcast. Uh, you know what fucking bothers me about dating is that we have to do it through. It's really hard to meet women in the wild now these days. So everything's on the apps. I suck at texting. Like I am the guy that writes out the whole word. I send these big, long fucking texts. Girls write back real snappy answers. And I don't have any efficiency when it comes to text, sending text messages. I'm not equipped to live in this text world when I have to communicate on a regular basis. So that drives me crazy. I need the old days where I just pick up the phone, call, make a date. Girls don't even pick up the phone anymore. It's really awful. Anyway, that's my gripe. Glad to have you back. Thanks, man. Cheers. I love this guy. <laughs> okay, what's your take on this? First of all, he sounds fed up. Yeah, he's tired. With everything. He's just tired. Yeah, he um, <laughs> he's not too tired to text a lot. <laughs> he wants to write. I get that. I do that sometimes. Like, I'll overwrite. Well, girls, girls write back snappy answers because girls are getting flooded with messages from guys. So it's like a full on so, job for you. So you have so, to go through. You can't. Yeah. Yeah. So the fact that he made it to the first message is great. But also, it's not hard to meet people in the wild. You just have to go out in the wild with that intention. I think if anything now, people are more hyped to be like, you know, approach because it's like flattering, you know, and you just have to not be scared of it. It is annoying, though, when you write like. You know, um, I'd love to take you out. I know a few different restaurants. We could, you know, do Italian or we could do Mexican. Uh, It was, you know, I love your profile. You're incredible. And all you get back is a cool. Okay. You know? Yeah. Whatevs. Yeah. You know? And I, I think what he needs to do is just pick up the phone, like call him. Because a lot of people assume people don't want to talk, especially if they're short texters, but maybe they are more talkers. Also, you could lo- you know, you get lost in textilation. Or FaceTime. Oh, FaceTime's strong, though. Really? Up, up front. I love a FaceTime. I would think um, you're a murderer. Really? If I got a FaceTime and I never talked to you before. <laughs> well, no, not never. But also, like <laughs> FaceTime a girl and she's not ready for a FaceTime, I would feel That's like... That's true. Sometimes I feel like even when you FaceTime me, I'm like, oh, my God, I look like an ogre. I have to not let, <laughs> not pick this up. Then I'll just text you. <laughs> or I like, hang up on or you, like when you're you. on the road, you always because you're on the road, you always call me at weird times. So I'm most of the time like in bed, like zit cream on, <laughs> like just looking disgusting, yeah. especially because you're not here. So I have like oil in my hair. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm like, who is this? Yeah, so I'll turn off the light. I'm like, he cannot. I'm, you answer, I think it's like a burglar. Like <laughs> I'm like, who the fuck is has Brenna's phone? Who is this monster? Hey. <laughs> you, you can only see the you outline. You fall apart when I leave. <laughs> I do. You I do. I have Chick-fil-A. to take out the trash. Ugh. Yeah, so many things. Um, yeah, so for that guy, I think like I, I would... Uh, a lot of this stuff is you just got to be honest and upfront about it. Like if you're texting and the, and the person's on is texting back short little things, be like, "Hey, you know, am I getting a negative vibe from you?" Um, no, that's too strong. That's as strong as a FaceTime. You have to say. It, then, you, then how do, you should be honest and be like, "Look, I need to communicate, and I'm not. I'm not. Uh, ma- can we talk on the phone? Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah perfect." I'd love to talk on the phone. I'm not great at texting, but I want to get to get to know you better. Maybe we can make a plan to see each other in person soon. Boom. And here's a dick pic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. What's next? Hey, Andrew. This is also Andrew. A uh, huge fan, by the way. But um, one thing that annoys me with dating is just the expectation to pay for the first date as a guy. Now, I always do it. I always pay for a first date which I would just feel weird not to. And I don't know where that weirdness comes from. I guess society, the expectations from society, I don't know. 
but um, I just I, I like to go on first dates. I like to meet new people, and you know, um, even when the date isn't going well, I just always have to do it, and I just I feel weird not to. So something I just personally struggle with, and it's pretty annoying because I live in a pretty expensive city, so um, the shit adds up. Oh yeah, I feel you, brother. I feel you, brother. <laughs> I feel that. What about this? What if a guy goes... Just wait until you get a girlfriend, though. Like, it's going to be way more. You can't get a girlfriend unless you go through the steps. That's what I'm saying. You're complaining about paying for a couple dinners. It's going to get worse, buddy. Oh, yeah, it does get way worse. (laughs) Yeah, you actually... Actually... The financial burden. (laughs) Start saving now. Um, If a guy goes... Okay, so he goes... okay. I think there's a few things he can do. One, pick cheaper places to go on first dates. But as a girl, or more, if I pick... More, yeah, like more casual dates. <laughs> would you know, think this guy's a cheap fuck because he's bringing me to Burger King or whatever he brings you to? Like, would you read into it more if it's not a nice place on the first date so he could save money, pay for the whole thing? But is he going to lose out because he brought you to like Applebee's or some shit? Well, don't take anybody to Applebee's, but <laughs> okay. plan a cute date like ice cream and a walk in the park or like oh hey i i love like well maybe not on the first date because i would think you're gonna murder me but like i love this like you know view or whatever like you took me to a grocery store and we got a hot bar meal and then like went and had a picnic (laughs) on like an over like a look over lookout of this of the ocean in malibu like that was like one of the most romantic things we've ever done yeah so yeah you could get yeah get a little bit creative with it Mm -hmm. um it's a lot, though, on a, any date before four or five where you're like, hey, let's go to the woods, you know, like, let's go to the park. Hey, no, let's go farther behind the tree. You know, yeah. like you got to you got to ease into that. It is funny. You could be cheaper the more you get into dating. I'd say start cheap. Take them. Go start with just drinks and appetizers. If the person also if the person's upset that they're not getting a full meal, they were just like I've seen women joke about like, oh, my, you know, I eat through dating apps like i eat at the best restaurants ever it's the best thing ever yeah. it's my you know I, I don't know i've seen women joke about that i do think women at times probably use guys to get really good Absolutely. meals yeah mm-hmm. so uh if the girl is like turned off because you're not spending <laughs> she's probably not the right <laughs> one time i went on a date with this guy and i got a full meal and i ordered <laughs> a pizza to take home no you didn't dude you're a fucking monster dude <laughs> <laughs> and it was you so put good. rolls in your fucking pockets you he, i can't <laughs> <laughs> what did he say Dude. He was like down for it. He was like, "Yeah, like ask me how it was and everything." But yeah. <laughs> so, when did you order the pizza? Like, how far into the date? So you got like shrimp scampi, and no, then you're like, "Yo, let he me- would just like take me out on din- dinner dates." Like, I fucking hate this guy. <laughs> <laughs> and like that was it. Like we would just go eat, and so like he was like how my old food was dude. This dude. He was older. He was my food dude. But like, yeah, and you ha- <laughs> you're one of these women I'm talking about. <laughs> Dude, that and is then horrible. He would, and then I had another guy who would send me food to my work. Like he would just and feed like me and my coworkers. Yeah. Are you dropping hints? I used here? to be a player. Uh, yeah, who <laughs> are you? Who? Are you? <laughs> and I never slept with them. Like I never had to sleep with them. Like they're just fools. Like they just. Who needs to sleep with them when you got a free pizza? Fucking what? When you get a pizza to take home, yeah. You know, yeah. I mean that. <laughs> like he didn't even come up to my apartment. Like, I just took the pizza and I was like, thank you. I mean, I don't know <laughs> how I feel about that. <laughs> you should be proud of me. That's it. Yeah, you yeah. actually. Yeah, you you definitely worked the system. Yeah, I finessed. <clears throat> but this guy that's complaining about <laughs> having to pay, girls are getting but full like, pizzas. But, like, girls, like, girls are the prize. Like, gr- like if you want to date hot girls, like, if you want to date, like, a good girl who's like good looking and has things going for her like that's your price like and okay, that's but like the price you, you pay that's the girlfriend tax like sh- <laughs> what about the other guy guys, that goes- guys their girlfriends is it's a status symbol to other guys guys want girlfriends who like put themselves together like look good they've got the hair mm. makeup nails done they do you do so you want so, free pizza to pay for so sephora like, yeah exactly <laughs> we are paying yeah. So anyways, 
That's, I'm sure that guy bought you makeup too. But I don't think <laughs> at the same time, like I'm not going to meet somebody on a dating app and like expect them to pay. I'm not like if I'm like getting to know you and I get a drink and French fries, like fine, I'll fucking pay for it. I don't <laughs> care, dude. Like also part of me paid for it because I knew I never wanted to see him again. Like I was like, I'm going to pay for this. Like, yeah. Because I'm going to go Because then you him. have nothing. He doesn't have anything yeah. over you. Yeah. No matter how many French. If you yeah. didn't buy your French fries. Yeah. All right. Next one. I'm sick of guys over 35, 40, sometimes even almost 50 on dating apps saying that they're not looking for anything serious, but they still want to have kids. I'm like, why do you think that you deserve a 25-year-old woman? You're past your prime, buddy. If you don't have kids in time, that's your fault. That feels very uh, direct. Does she know who she's calling into? Does she know whose show this is? <laughs> oh, my God. That's great. I don't care if you're 43, your name's Andrew. I don't give a fuck who you think you are, why you think you deserve Brenna. Yeah, they're looking for a woman who's 25 because she doesn't want to have kids for another five years. So they're like, oh, we can like date casually and see where it goes. (laughs) 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 That's crazy. Yeah, I mean, look. So they're looking for surrogates. The problem is, is guys can have a kid. Until they're, I mean, we saw Mick Jagger have a kid when he was like 90. And who else? Oh, Robert. Um, Clooney? Al Pacino. Al Pacino. I mean, these guys are having kids of fucking 100. They're 140 years old. But and I think there's something about works. old cum. Like it, your kid doesn't come out as good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. It could already read. I feel like it's smarter than that. It's ever. wise. Come those, out. Are, those are the old souls. When people say <laughs> that they're an old soul it just means that their dad was yeah. really old yeah. when, when yeah. they were when they that were kid made. comes out he has a monocle on <laughs> he's fucking just reading the encyclopedia he's like oh yes <laughs> my father is out pacino he's like you're three days old i know <laughs> okay oh. so yeah um no that sucks it sucks when because women unfortunately you have a uh your clock's ticking you can't have kids later in life. Also, your value, unfortunately, goes down. I'm not saying it goes down, but society <laughs> says it goes down the older you get. So you're competing with that. And then guys can look, you know. Why do you date, think that you dated younger? Uh, you DM me. <laughs> no, because all of the girls, all of your exes were younger than you. Um, or all the girls you dated were mostly younger than I you. I think I'm a young soul. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Dude, I had carrots under my bed. I'm not going to be able to date someone my age. You Can are you amazing. imagine what a 40-year-old woman would say to me? You're actually she, like a toddler. Yeah. She would ruin me. She'd I be mean, like, get your life together. You don't have a 401k. I mean, you say these things to me now. Yeah. But it's... <laughs> okay. Dude, a woman my age would fucking be like, you're a fucking... Get your shit like to the point where it probably actually that's not good. Maybe they wouldn't even care at all and be even more independent. But um, yeah. So you don't have an answer. I you just liked them younger. I mean, you make it sound like it's like a, I don't. It's not really like a thing. It's or, kind of no. Just, it's a thing. No, I'm just kind of lazy and like that's who like approach me. I'm not saying that I'm happy you did, <laughs> but I'm saying that like. <laughs> with the times we're at like like women that were in there like wouldn't hit me up and like yeah. whatever they weren't the women hitting me up also a lot of women your age have like been there done that like they probably do have children like a lot of them like yeah. you kind of like, want me for you wanted financial like, like you you were like i want to like maybe be married and have ch- children someday like you wanted to start like from a place of like oh we're doing this together not like i'm dating divorced women yeah, I, I just I feel like I, the fact that if I had to come in as a stepdad where yeah. I still have carrots under my bed <laughs> and the kids like fucking I have to be a disciplinarian. I mean, it would be ridiculous. I mean, I couldn't even do it with a straight face. If yeah. you came in and you were like, like, you know, you stayed out past curfew. And I was like, how could how could me and your mother are worried sick? And you're like, no. dude, you fucking have carrots under your bed. And I'll be no. like, don't look at my bed. Focus on your bed, Sebastian. But but if w- when we have a, a kid, like 
You're, then I'll be fine. You, no, you're gonna By the be time like I'm sixty. You're gonna be like pretty normal. I think you're not gonna. I don't think you're gonna be like too high key. And I think like we're both gonna be pretty cash with our kid for the most part. And I think it, the kid's gonna come out great. Like I think like if you just like treat your kid like an actual human and like aren't like, Rah! yeah, you know. I think I yeah I think I'll be good until. I think it'll be hard when you try to do everything right kind mm-hmm. of thing and you're not a piece of shit and your kid still <laughs> fucking shits on you. I don't know how I'm going to deal with that. It's going to be tough. <laughs> and and if I have a girl and she's just like, fuck you, dad, I'm going out with Carl. And she jumps on the back of a Harley. I'll fucking, uh, I'll be like, that's pretty cool. Carl on a Harley definitely has a dangly <laughs> earring too. He's got dude, two dangly I'll be earrings. so pissed. I'll be like, fucking Carl, dude, you're so cool. <laughs> I'll ask Carl for dating advice. <laughs> like, so where should he? Where should I take your uh, her mother? <laughs> what should I do for her Aww. mother? He's like, dude, just fucking. I don't know. You do try really hard though with yeah. me. Like yeah. you do. Try, you put in a lot of effort. So all those forty year olds are. Wait till we have out. a kid. You'll get nothing. You're gonna what? be pissed at the kid for taking all your shit. Think about me with Mango. It's me and Mango against you. You think it, that it's gonna be you and the kid? Yeah, it's be so point. for real. Oh God. Yeah. All right, last one. What we got? Hey Andrew, it's Ryan from St. Louis, Missouri. Your old stomping ground, buddy. Anyway, most annoying thing about dating in 2023, I would say, is you meet these people online. You have a conversation for several days to get to know them. You make plans to meet, lunch, coffee, maybe just a happy hour. You hang out. You have a decent time. You continue to have a conversation and texts over the next several weeks. You make other plans, nothing elaborate, just things to get to know them. And then I see at about a month in to a lot of these relationships or dating, you have the girl asking you the question, are we boyfriend and girlfriend? To me, there's nothing more annoying than that. To me, there's nothing bigger as far as a red flag than that. Hope you're doing well, Andrew. Peace out, homie. That's so fucking funny. Dude, I was not expecting <laughs> That is so fucking funny. I thought it was going to be the other way around. I thought he was going to say, you got to do all this, and then they just ghost you. But no, oh then they God. go, are we born? <laughs> I'm dead. I was not expecting. That was a left turn. That's you. That's literally you. That's you in a nutshell. You have to like. Help no, it's got to be so out. annoying for the woman to be like, he's doing everything a boyfriend would do. And then when you bring it up, he looks at you like you're, I guess that's what gaslighting is. That what you guys are calling it? Well, it sounds like these women don't know how to date because first of all, a month in is too, it's way too fast. But like, that's not even, don't ever bring it up until, well, actually I brought it up, but like, <laughs> wait a minute. And it's how you bring it up. But you're not, there is a a line where you go, either I'm going to bring it up because I'd rather know now and cut it than it, the expectations and I keep getting let down. So you have to, I, no, it's a, tr- it's a tricky mm-hmm. time. To, it, it's time sensitive because if you bring it up too early, he'll run away. If you bring it up too late you, and then you find out that he never wanted to do it any then you you know you're in some shitty situation for way longer than you should have been so i think the first date you ask are you boyfriend girlfriend (laughs) (laughs) literally go look i want to bring home another pizza (laughs) yeah i don't know i it's that's too soon yeah a month month in yeah Yeah. so what is the time three months there is no time but like i i mean yeah so it could be different just like read the room yeah read the room Cause there's people who are like, Let's but get it sounds like he was doing everything with these women. Yeah. It sounds like he was, he, I he mean, had a if, full list. If anything, cause I'm pretty sure I did this with you. Yeah. I say, Hey, like I'm not seeing other people just like what I, I like what we're doing. Like I want to just like enjoy getting to know you more and like yeah. wanted to, wanted to let you know that I'm not seeing other people right now. Like that's perfectly fine. Cause then it gives them some assurance like, okay, let's keep pursuing this. But like, it's like pretty low pressure. Yeah, You want low pressure, but yeah. you also want to show your own value. Yeah. So by doing that, you kind of, or you show that like, don't hey, tell uh, them that you're not seeing other people then. If I found out that you were seeing other people the whole time, I would have been, it would have been a left turn. Yeah. But that's you. You're like a secret soft teddy bear. <laughs> 
I don't know how secret it is. I'm definitely soft most of the time. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, it is interesting when, like, oh, you were dating other people the whole time? Like, that would have been, yeah. that would be something that, you know, this day and age, I guess it's expected. But when you think that someone is one-on-one with you and you find out they're dating, like, oh, no, you're, like, Thursday and Friday guy. That I would I would have run for the hills. Oh my gosh, I have a crazy story about this actually. But mentally, okay. I need you to prepare because you're not gonna love it. But I was hooking. I used to hook up with this guy for like years, and he one time he had a he was like I was supposed to meet him at his place. He was late getting back, so he told his doorman to like let me in. He's a doorman. Yeah. So his oh, doorman prick. I brings me upstairs, lets me in. I go to his bedroom and he fucking had a a girl ha- left a note on his bed saying like had a great weekend with you like whatever blah 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 like wrote like two inside jokes like hope you enjoy the scones I made you and they're in the fridge I go to the fridge they're in there so he Did you that eat means Did you eat that he left them that morning he left her in his apartment she did all of that she put a fucking teddy bear in his bed and then had me come over without even coming back home in between it and then he come and like that's crazy right that's crazy and what did you do this is the kicker i um what did you do be (laughs) honest no it's really bad what did you do it's not you ate the scones I went in and I looked at the scones and then I like went to his alcohol bar and like took like two shots of tequila and I left the note on the bed with the, with the teddy bear and he came in and I was sitting on his couch and I was like kind of drunk and he came in and he, um, like was like, Hey, what's up? And I was just like, Hey, whatever. Like he's being like, we had been hooking up for years, like, or two, not even Oh, we like by the time it was done, it was two, two years, but um, and then he like, I didn't say anything and he like went to go to his bedroom or whatever. And like, it was just silence. And he, and then he comes back and I was just like, what the fuck? Like whatever, you know? And we just had a convo about it. But, um, anyways, I don't think that's how it ended. <laughs> You're lying. You had the two shots of tequila. You banged him one more time. Yeah, I did. Yeah. And then it was a <laughs> slow fade. Yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. All right. Well, that's puddles. Uh, that's the first episode <laughs> of I w- I don't know if we'll bring this up ever again. <laughs> I do want to know if you ate the scones with him. And I do want to know when you eventually cut it off and how shitty did he have to be for you to end it? <laughs> or did you meet me the next night? <laughs> no. <laughs> and realize you can get a new free meal. <laughs> um, thank you for listening. Uh, go see me in Portland, Oregon. October 19th at Helium Comedy Club. Uh, I'm really excited about doing shows there. Uh, We are back. Thank you again for listening. If you're checking in for the fifth time, that means uh, you're you're awesome. And uh, yeah, tell people that to listen to Puddles. Uh, Like and subscribe. Leave comments. And next week I will do another prompt. Uh, Next week we'll do... um, Living together, what's annoying about living with someone, and leave your voicemails. I'll do the prompt on Instagram stories. Thank you again for listening. Anything? No. No? Everybody have a great week. You don't want to give a skincare tip? Oh. Oh, yeah. If you are, you should be a daily sunscreen wearer, but if you wear vitamin C and then mix it with your... Um, sunscreen every day it makes your sunscreen or your uv protection two times more powerful just make sure that you're purchasing a stable vitamin c in a dark jar and you store it in a in a dark place okay That's each it. week you're going to get a new skincare uh lesson from brenna who will be an esthetician in less than two months month and a half yeah and uh <laughs> don't worry we're going to tell you exactly where she's working so you can bring her a pizza yes All right, thanks for listening. I do need a new food, dude. (laughs) Kill you. (laughs) Bye, guys. Later. Puddles, 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 puddles. Everybody now puddles, puddles. Everybody get up.
up because you get down and then everyone will come over here.